hey, it's me, Nancy Pelosi. And I'm not worried because even though Donald Trump gave a unifying and presidential speech, I have confidence that the American people will continue to believe their honest media when they are told that Trump is a fascist divider of the people. And oh, that's gotta be from Fox. John Doyle in. Heck off, commie. Hello there, ladies, gentlemen, and those of us still undecided, it is okay, take your time. Welcome to Heck Off Commie. Today, we will go over the State of the Union, why Trump knocked it out of the park, why the left hated it, particularly the new darlings of the Democrat Party, Bernie Sanders and Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, both of whom self-identify as socialists. How special. But first, a couple of things. Firstly, I'm preparing for a speaking event at the University of Michigan next week, at which I will be lecturing dozens of college students on how the progressive doctrine has corrupted relationships between men and women. So I may not post another video until I upload the recording of the speech, but we'll see. Secondly, I got my tax return back and I'm just dying to show you what I bought with it. So stick around till the end of the video and I will show you. So last night, Trump gave his second State of the Union address. I'm sure you all watched it, so I won't get into the specific details of what was covered, but I'm sure you liked it because it was a great speech. And here's the part that's terrifying the left. 82% of independents approved of the speech, while only 30% of Democrats approved of the speech, and 97% of Republicans, of course, approved of the speech. So there seems to be a substantial deficit between how the independents feel about the Trump administration, or at least the future of the Trump administration, since it isn't going anywhere anytime soon. Sorry to disappoint the hashtag it's Mueller time fanatics. Here's another thing that is terrifying the left. 72% of the viewers approve of President Trump's immigration ideas. Let's connect those lines really quick. So it's common knowledge that the independent voters are the ones that decide elections. 82% of those independents viewed his speech favorably. Now, does that mean that they're going to support him in 2020 or that they agree with everything that he says? Not necessarily, but there's no way that that can hurt him. The left has become so radicalized, they've gone so far left, and they have yet to realize that this country generally does not support those ideas. But instead of realizing this and shifting their platform, they've quite literally doubled down on all of it. And the people seem to be responding. This is why they're terrified of Howard Schultz, former CEO of Starbucks, running for president. Don't help elect Trump, you egotistical billionaire. This guy is a self-made lifelong Democrat who comes out and says that this country just can't afford the Medicare for all policies that the Democrats are advocating for. And they're like, yeah, of course not, but they're not supposed to know that, Howard. The left is so intoxicated by their Marxist ideology, they won't realize that you're going to have to work a little bit harder than that if you want to transition a traditionally center-right country into a socialist utopia. That's why they're so adamant about immigration. Don't be fooled. The independents think that they're going too far. The moderate Democrats think that they're going too far. So what's the plan? Import new voters, voters that over overwhelmingly vote Democrat. That's the plan. I mean, what else could be the reason? They're elected to represent the people. 72% of the people approve of Donald Trump's immigration ideas. Since 1789, the oath that every congressman has taken said that they swear to support the Constitution of the United States. What is literally the first thing that the Constitution says? That this document is established for the United States of America, not for Mexico, not for Honduras, for America. So these congressmen are acting outside of their job description for what purpose? Power. I think that much is clear. So why did the independents like this speech, the speech so much? Excuse me. They're independent, first of all. They don't inherently hate everything that Trump does for the sake of party conformity. So if Trump cites facts that prove that the country is doing better, they'll be happy to hear this since they have no incentive to sit there looking angry because Trump is accomplishing things for the bettering of the country and you've spent the last three years hating on him. And that's the thing. When Trump succeeds, the left loses. The left loses because they have effectively made their entire platform into Trump equals bad. So that when people see that Trump is taking steps to improve the lives of people in the country, they start to realize that Trump does not equal bad. That means that since the Democrats are campaigning on undoing everything that Trump has done, maybe it's the Democrats that equal bad. Don't help elect Trump, you egotistic. Last night, Trump announced that 5.3 million jobs have been created, 600,000 of which being manufacturing jobs that no one thought he could create, 5 million fewer people on food stamps, lowest unemployment in recorded history for blacks, Hispanics, and Asians. What a racist. And that more people are working now than at any time in our history. And also, that people should come into this country legally. All objectively good things. Democrats clapped for none of them, which is fine because had they, they would have angered their base. But keep in mind that the average Joe sees half the room sitting when these things are announced and wonders just how anti-American 
Republican the Democrats can get, especially because Donald Trump directly called out the Democrats for their unnecessary partisanship and for their stupid little Mueller investigation that has gone absolutely nowhere and everyone's tired of hearing about. The Democrats have just over a week left before the government will be shut down again. And Trump mentioned this too. And now the Democrats know that not only do 72% of Americans approve of Trump's ideas, but they also know that Trump compromised with us, reopened the government, but made clear that if nothing was solved with regards to border security, that it would be shut down again. Uh-oh, now the ball's in their court and they're going to have to figure something out. They're cornered and look how upset they are. Look at Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. She was called out for looking so bummed out. And guess how she responded? She said, quote, why should I be spirited and warm for this embarrassment of a state of the union? Tonight was an unsettling night for our country. The president, notice she didn't capitalize it, hashtag resist, failed to offer any plan, any vision at all for our future. We're flying without a pilot. And I'm not here to comfort anyone about that, dear God. So we know that no one actually agrees with her judging by the approval of the speech. And it isn't that he didn't offer a plan. It's just that his plan goes against everything that her plan stands for. Therefore, she doesn't even acknowledge it as a viable option for the direction of the country. Not only that, Trump, the absolute mad lad, straight up said that we will never be a socialist country. Did that sit well with Bernie and AOC? No, it did not. That's why she's so mad. That's why she's got that petty look on her face, very similar to a child that isn't getting their way. She doesn't want the country to get better. She wants the country to become socialist. She doesn't care that Policies that exactly contradict her own worldview are bettering the lives of Americans. All she cares about is that rich people have too much money. That's the thing about socialists. It isn't that they want to help the poor. It's just they hate the rich. That's why the conversation isn't, hey, poverty is bad. It's, hey, why should we have a system that allows billionaires to exist? Capitalism is the greatest system in the history of the world for pulling people out of poverty, but they just cannot and will not accept that because they are hell-bent on turning the USA into a socialist country, to which the rest of us will always reply, good luck. Good luck. Anyways, I got my tax return back and I of course immediately thought should I donate this to Planned Parenthood or to Amnesty International, but instead I opted to buy one of the most hated things by the left, cited on almost every piece of proposed gun ban legislation. That's right, I bought a Tech 9. Look at this thing, you can see why they hate it. It looks so scary. This magazine isn't loaded by the way, but it's pretty freaking cool. And I, before I get to, John, you idiot, now the government knows you have it, they're gonna kick your door down and take it. It's already registered to me. There's no way of getting around that. They know I have it, so chill out. But um, yeah, have a good day. Hey guys, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. It really helps me out. Maybe leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. Always curious. And uh, you can click my face down there to subscribe if you haven't done so already. Also, do me a favor. Share this video with every single person that you know. Every single one. All of them. We're going to make this channel the most powerful channel. We're going to take over YouTube and surpass PewDiePie and T-Series all within the next three days. It's going to be biblical. I look forward to it. See you next time. Thank you so much for watching. May God bless America.